Okay, Infinite Megahertz, and we're here with Paul, Paul of... 3D Realms Entertainment. <laughs> now, uh, as you know, with 3D Realms, they started out with a few different products, and of course the most popular one we've had so far is... Duke Nukem 3D. Duke absolutely. Nukem, and Duke Nukem, of course, is a great you know, first-person perspective game. Everybody happens to love it, even above even other games that have been released after it. <laughs> Which, yeah, we're pretty surprised about. Um, well, one of the things that's kind of interesting about 3D Realms is... Um, Actually, it's you know you've heard of Apogee Software. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Three Realms is sort of like the um, you know the Ford Lincoln Continental. It's it's mm -hmm. the premium brand name of Apogee Software. <laughs> and Apogee's actually been around for a long time, over a decade. Oh, yeah. Um, has published I think geez over 30 games. Mm -hmm. um, pioneered the shareware marketing method that we call the Apogee model. Mm -hmm. And with um, I think it started with Terminal Velocity. Um, this sort of action game was when <laughs> 3D Realms kind of came into being. Mm -hmm. um, when we really decided, that, wow, we want to sort of take the industry and just just show them what people who really love to play games can do. <laughs> and that's what counts in the long run, is the people who love to play the games are now making the games, as we, opposed to some other areas where it's a PR person telling them what they should make. Uh, absolutely. And actually, we're really kind of lucky at 3D Realms. Mm -hmm. um, because we're a small company, we only have 20 developers. Mm -hmm. We only work on two in-house projects at a time. Mm -hmm. um, we really aren't structured by the whole quarter system, that whole business model mm -hmm. that, that drives everybody crazy who's <laughs> trying to produce creative work. So our games, I mean, our sort of tagline is our games are done when they're done. Exactly. And, and what that means to us is the game is done when we play it more than any other game we've ever played before. <laughs> it's the most fun game. Then we think other people will probably mm -hmm. like it. Yep. Now you have a release coming out very soon by the name of uh, Shadow Warrior. Shadow Warrior. Yeah, the, uh, the shareware version is out there. You can download it anywhere. Um, and about six weeks for the registered version to be done. And that's um, an engine or a game using the build engine, mm -hmm. our, um, our technology that we used in Duke Nukem 3D. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of pushing past Duke in Shadow War. We're taking the build engine as far as you can go. It's, it seems like it's true 3D, even though it's a different technology kind right. of engine. But um, we've got interactivity like you would not believe. And it runs on the lower machines, and it's coming out now, whereas we have some other ones that have to, I've been seeing, well, we need only this type of technology, or you're going to need a Pentium 166 MMX to run our machines. And as you were telling us earlier, you have Prey, which is coming out much later, which is your next project or a project you're actually working on right now. Yeah, well, we're, we actually have a couple things that we're working on right now. Um, mm -hmm. We're wrapping up Shadow Warrior right now. The team, mm -hmm. the Shadow Warrior team is just going through the last... Like it, they're like, I liken it to their painters. They're mm -hmm. they're, wait, they're working on their levels, and it's never quite done for them. They're, they're looking for that little piece of lint that was just bothering them and trying to get rid yeah, of it. <laughs> exactly. And when that's done, it's probably when um, George, the president of 3D Realms, just says, "Stop working. It's done. It's perfect." <laughs> um, but another smaller team is beginning work on Duke Nukem Forever, the next Duke uh, Nukem game, which is using the Quake engine of mm -hmm. it's a Great engine, <laughs> and we're really excited about that. Um, once the Shadow Warrior team is done, they're moving over Onto to Duke forever. Great. So that team's in place. And you know, your second project, of course, is the Prey team? It's the Prey team. And that's I'm project leader of the Prey team, um, serving as our producer designer. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we're really excited about. We're shooting for um, probably shareware release sometime summer of 98. So we're mm -hmm. a ways away. Um, but we're kind of here at the show just kind of giving a little taste of what yeah. we're doing because we're... We're tease. Really, yeah, tease. <laughs> and it's, it's been kind of fun because we're really trying to do something for, to basically jump over the games that are on, in the progress now. Mm -hmm. um, jump past Quake, jump past Quake 2, jump past Unreal. I mean, those are going to be absolutely A great typical games. Intel product where they're making the chips that you're going to be using three generations ahead. <laughs> yeah. And, but actually, I mean, we're not really so reliant on all that crazy technology. Mm -hmm. um, the one decision that we made with Prey is it has to be a 3D accelerated game. You, you, we yeah. have to have a 3D accelerated Sure. But next year, I think that'll be okay. That's going to be very standard. And next year, by the time that rolls around, most people will have the 3D accelerators. Yeah. And by that time also, they're going to have much, much faster machines. I mean, we have to all take into account that this is the computer world. And in the computer world, things move that fast. And the other thing is... <laughs> and if you're building it with your machine technology now... Yeah. All I can think of is in the future, everybody's not going to see things like lag. They're not going to see any any sort of refreshes that have come across. We're, we're hoping that. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the one thing that's kind of neat about the people who play computer games, like, religiously, it, I mean, it's <laughs> almost uh, an obsessive hobby for them, is they upgrade all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a way, it, it makes our job harder because we have to keep pushing the hardware limits and making games faster, more incredible. But we're pretty sure that, you know, if we require a P200 for a certain game, 
most people who want to play that game will already have PT mm-hmm. license if they're fanatic game players. <laughs> so it's it's like it's a nice uh, it's, they work together really well mm-hmm. the industry and the fanatic players. Now Shadow Warrior, you have, have what kind of requirements on a, a um, hardware level? Shadow Warrior basically needs a, a baseline Pentium, mm-hmm. and that's that's essentially it. And that's because you're using the old Duke Nukem 3D engine. Yeah, which actually that would run on a 4633 just mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. Um, you know, not not multiplayer and all that stuff. Right. It could run just fine, but we're we're kind of bumping up what the we're we're stretching the engine to its <laughs> absolute max. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty much the end of life of the build engine. Mm-hmm. You just can't go any further; it'll just explode. Um, but what we've done with it is pretty spectacular. But mm-hmm. if you have a if you have a Pentium, you can run it and run mm-hmm. it well. And then Prey, of course, is being it's a 98 game and being it's a 3D accelerated game. Now, I see Prey in front of me here. Mm-hmm. Could could you give us a little walkthrough? Yeah, I could show you. Uh, let me just tell you a few things that make a little bit different. Basically, what we're showing here is sort of a little technology demo. I got a firearm weapon there. Oh, wow. Um, what, what's kind of cool about Prey is we're using what we call portal technology. It's a mm-hmm. different way to um, it's a different way to break up 3D geometry. And let me zoom over here, and I'm going to do something that's kind of cool. I'm going to create a dynamic portal, a hole in space. I don't know if you can see <laughs> that, but there's there, it has no height, no width, it's not really an object, it's just a tear in space, Mm -hmm. I can go through it, turn around, there it is, and I can close it like a window shade, and I'm somewhere else. (laughs) Now that's something that that has never been attempted before. um, Usually you have the wavy door, you don't really see beyond. Yeah, and what's going on here is actually physical rip in three-dimensional space. I mean, Mm -hmm. this is truly mathematically a 4D engine, Mm -hmm. but our engine program has got to explain it because my head explodes, (laughs) so I thought I'd get around that. But what that gives you play-wise is it gives you the ability to imagine opening a portal to a level on a different server on the mm-hmm. internet. Um, being able to set a send and receive port you can create in a deathmatch game. Mm-hmm. So you can like create your own areas where you jump around. And um, bounce back and forth between each other's areas, yeah. for instance. And what we're actually able to do is our portal technology means our environments are completely dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, they are basically 100% real-time. And if you just zoom down here, here's a little thing that i, I got to show you. There's a little guy over here who's going to jump over here. You notice we have a reflective marble floor. Yes. Um, which is absolutely beautiful. And it reflects <laughs> the character. The thing is that no other game to date has been able to do this without a speed hit. Because of the way our engine works, mm-hmm. no speed hit whatsoever. I mean, right. we're running this right now at a very, it's probably 45 to 50 frames a second. Yeah. On a 166 with 32 megs of RAM and just a standard 3D effects card. So we're pretty confident that we're not going to just require all this hardware for our mm-hmm. players to play. Yes. And, you know, we've got a lot of other things that we're, we're working on, but basically the, the key point with Prey is we're really trying to take a different approach. Mm-hmm. And we've been pretty excited by the reaction we've had. We sort of have in the back room here because we're... We just want to give people a little taste, and uh-huh. people come away kind of blown away. And, and <laughs> we're just completely jazzed. It looks I, beautiful. Yeah, and I can't believe that I'm still conscious after three years. Of this, I love it. It's great. Well, E3 is the place to be. Well, thank you very much, Paul. Really appreciate the, uh, the the walkthroughs and some of the information, and maybe we'll have a little bigger interview with you and a couple of your developers later. Great. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.